up here. Pop, 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 pop. Let's do it. Pop. Pop. Oh, oh, missed it right there. Did you see it? See how I let it sit? And he came up and missed it right there. Oh, I got my blood going. Oh, right there. Holy crap, they're right under it. Whoa. Oh my God. Whoa, that's a big one too. This is a good fish. Holy crap. There. Whoa. Oh, where'd he go? Come get this fish. Alrighty guys, we got Mr. Channel Cat hooked up for live bait, baby. It's time. Mr. Big Flathead, hopefully coming in hot. Well, it's about seven o'clock at night here in East Tennessee, Knoxville, and we are gonna go try to get on some topwater striped bass right at dusk, because we don't have any skipjack, we don't have any catfish bait, no gizzard shed, no nothing. We bait poor, but we got some topwater baits, and we're gonna go buy a couple more from Big Fish Outfitters here in a second, and then we're gonna go below the dam, and right as that sun's setting, Hopefully we find the big striped bass coming and chasing shad and stuff on the surface and blowing up and uh, we can catch some, uh, some big ones and uh, have a good old little evening. So that's what we're doing today. Nothing super fancy. We're just going to have us a good old, good old time and uh, not try to burn to death because it's still 95 degrees. So uh, we're going to be out there like right at dusk when it's a little bit less awful. I believe these puppies will work nicely. Now I gotta try not to spend two hundred dollars on stuff that I don't need. <laughs> Which is very easy to do in here. They got them big cat extra heavies down there. Yeah, and the Dixie Customs, by God. By God. <laughs> Look at this. I just want to buy it to buy it. I think I already have one of those. I'm sure you do. Actually. I I know I have yeah. like some of these. Well, sixty dollars later, we bought a bunch of crap we didn't need. It was a snake. It was a magic swimmer. Let me see it. We were all magic swimmers at one point. This is a wake bait, so it's just gonna kind of go like that on the surface. But it's got like super beefy hooks on it, so should wrangle in a striper pretty well. It's like eight o'clock out here and it's still hotter than a catalytic converter at a daggum pawn shop here in East Tennessee. I don't know what's nastier, this cooler or Brian's mustache. I'm thinking it's the stash. Ooh, baby, here we go, here we go, here we go. That's gonna get murked. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I hope y'all are not expecting a serious fishing video because a serious fishing video this will not be. We are just out here screwing around with, uh, I got a big giant like appropriate rod and reel for this. And by God custom. Dixie by God custom rod. Look at that. I hope you just get smoked on that reel. That one I caught the other night went upstream in the current. If they go downstream with that, you about to get murked. Catching a little bit of skipjack before the striper busting. Hey, you got it in the boat. Let me turn this off before we get copyrighted. Look, you tangled up your skipjack rig. Hey, it's his fault. At least you got it in the boat this time. You made it one cast and already messed up the rig. One cast. If that ain't the most web thing I ever seen, I don't know what is. Oh, we're good. We're good, messed up, man. <laughs> 
Alright y'all, before we uh, catch some fish at this haunted dam, we're going to catch some bait fish. And if we see stripers blowing up on the surface, we will catch some stripers. But until then, I'm catching bait for tomorrow morning because I took off work tomorrow because today at work was the biggest you-know-what show I've ever seen. No, I don't know what. Can you elaborate, please? No, because YouTube and we got kids watching. It's a you-know-what show. There's a skipjack. Look at this. Look at this. We got Webb over here uh, un untying his thing. Me missing skipjack. Talk we got the people on the bank yelling at the dudes in the boat. Got one in the boat. Look, I just see one in the floorboard of the boat getting all nasty. Oh, not my bait, it's your bait. This is true. We've got to work tomorrow. It sucks to suck. Unfortunately, the degenerates are not counting for those. <laughs> I don't take days off. No. Come on, Skippy, where you at? one well I'm gonna put this guy in the cooler my man's got what's he got he got a little striper got a little striper a little striper a little striper action you know what web doesn't have a functioning rig let's take bets on how many casts web gets before that's tangled up again I bet I catch one on the first cast yeah Let's see. You did catch one of the first cats last time, didn't you? That's only a three for rig two on the janky rod. Can we, I just missed one, dadgummit. Well, they here, look, they busted on the surface right there. Come on, daddy, let me catch some skipjack. I wanna go fish for catfish tomorrow during the middle of the spawn, cause I'm a glutton for punishment. And it's a hundred degrees, literally. I ain't catch nothing on that one. Missed one. That gummit. Let's try that again. Yoink. We're having to use two ounces of weight right now, at least on the spoon, because the last few times I've been out here, you had to get your bait deep, deep to get bit. And uh, there's so much flow right now in the middle of the day that three quarter ounce just won't do it. We went with a two for a two ouncer just to get our Foley spoon rig down closer to the bottom. And uh, we're gonna catch a little bait. Catch about 10 skipjack or so. Maybe a little more. I'm gonna go fish all day tomorrow. Well, in the morning and then in the afternoon. I ain't coming out here in the middle of the day again. It's times are tough for a ginger. Five casts, I counted it. This one. Did you break it off or did you get it back? Whoa, missed that one. Broke it off. We got five kids. skipjack on oh good so brian while broken off or snagged up more than i on average gets them to the boat more than me so now it's the math problem of hooking more versus getting more in the boat who wins we are two to four right now two to five There's 
one. All right, let's see if I get them in. I set it twice, so if it comes off like it just wasn't meant to be. Woo! Gosh. Look, it came off coming in the boat. <laughs> After setting the hook, daggum, two times. And tangle my, tangle my weight up. Listen. Listen, Linda. Oh, about hit the other boat out there. Can't see him. Can I go for two for two? Can I go two for two? There's one. This is a good one. This is a good one. My phone's going off. There's waves. I got a skipjack on. Sun's in my eyes. Look, two for two. I'll take it. I don't know if this video is going to be its own video or I'm going to combine it with more spawn catfishing. But either way, there's fish in this now. We also spent a combined 60 to $70 at Big Fish. Um, and I'm convinced that Big Fish Outfitters is the Sephora of dudes. So, it's Nick, like hanging out there or yeah, got to get my makeup, dog. But uh, next time, guys, your wife wants to go uh, shopping on a Sunday in Turkey Creek or somewhere out here, just make a stipulation. We got to go to Big Fish for a solid two hours. Right. You can calm down. You ain't calm but uh, no, nah, man, that's like the coolest freshwater shop for big fish that there is. Not sponsored at all. It's just a good place. Oh, web is on. It's looking awful white bassy because it's not jumping. Come on, let it be a walleye so we can eat dinner and it not be Taco Bell. I'm feeling it's a white bass though. It is a white bass. White bass. White bass. We're catching the white bass. Come on, Mr. White Bass. Tell your big, your your uncle's, well, he's bait. Tell Mr. Stripers to start busting. The now, the question is, can Brian get that before it goes underneath the floorboard of the boat? Sometimes you just gotta add some rotten fish to your boat and give it a little pizzazz. Skip Jack in the cinder block. Skip Jack in the cinder block. My man's got, what's he got? He got a little striper? Got a little striper. A little striper, a little striper action. You know what Webb doesn't have? A functioning rig. Before we do that though, I'm gonna put a leader on this skipjack rod. Fluorocarbon, and then I'm gonna put a top water on it. Oh, Brian missed one. Missed another one. Whifferoni. We're just going to connect this with a double uni knot. One, two, three, four, five. That's good enough for 50 pounds. But this braid, you got to wrap her a little more. Way smaller diameter. Probably do it 10 or 11 times. Brian's hooked up. Woo! Skip or miss him? Came off? You did. All right. Well, that's tied. We're gonna be able to throw it out there to them. Now, whether we can get them in or not on this tackle is another story. Doable, done it lots and lots and lots of times. We'll even chase them with the big motor. But I think we're gonna run a popper on this one. We got a walk a dog style bait on the other one. So I'm gonna put just a different style bait on this one 
if uh, they aren't locking the other stuff. This one will just pop on the surface. This one you can just tie it a simple clinch knot with because it's just big mono or a fluoro. That braid's gonna break before this knot slips. We got like, what pound test braid is on here, Brian? 20, 25. It feels like 20. We got 25 pound or 20 pound braid to 50 fluoro liter. You gotta run that liter on this because I should have probably made a little bit longer, but if their fins, the top fins touch this line, it just cuts it on this smaller diameter uh, braid. And boy, that casts a mile. If they come up on this, Brian, you'll be able to hit right on top of them before anywhere close. And you just kind of pop, 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 pop. And if one's blowing up on, on something or you put it in the right place, they will just murk this. And it, it'll just be on fire. Just scream and drag. So we will be back with you if we hook up with one. So we're going to start running up and down to the dam now just to cover some water, see where they're at. But uh, we could probably throw swim baits and stuff after them, but I want to catch one on top water. A lot of water. We're going to leave the main engine running. If they start blowing up on top, we got to get to them quick before they go back down. Sometimes you only got 20 seconds or less to get a bait on top of them. You only got one shot. Right there, right there, Brian. Rolling up right there. Hundred percent blow up right there. I don't think that thing's gonna work in this much flow. Pop, 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 pop. I heard a bus somewhere. Where was it? Definitely heard it. I'm gonna walk this guy back and forth. I'm just using the real handle. Click, 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 click. And that gets that bait to walk. You don't have to pop the rod pit necessarily. Sometimes you can. But I like using the rod, the real handle. I'm doing it like this. Pop, 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 pop. Let it sit. Pop. Pop. Oh, oh, missed it right there. Did you see it? See how I let it sit and he came up and missed it right there. Oh, I got my blood going. Oh, right there. Holy crap, they're right under it. Whoa. Oh my God. Whoa, that's a big one too. This is a good fish. Holy crap. Brian, start throwing over there. Get that popper, get the popper. Just right there, there's, God, man, he's digging. Yeah. Are we chasing or are we? I don't need to chase, I got this big rod. We're good. You throw back over there, see if you can double up. Yeah, baby! Woo! God, there he goes, four line. Woo! Oh, he came off! Oh, no. He came off! Dang it! That was like a 30 pounder. That was a big striper. Man, this bait, I've got this walk, big super spook by Kevin Van Dam. Cut that off and throw this guy on. We got another one down there. Bro, that was a, did you see him just coming up and swinging at it? Like four of them came up after it. God, I'm shaking. They're in the bag, yeah. Dude, that was just nuts. Now I'm not gonna run straight back over the top where that happened, I'm gonna go around and then come back down. Good God, Brian. I don't know how he came off. 
I, I backed the drag off. I wonder if you bent one of my hooks out. No, just came off. Still got the dang shakes, and that's rare for me after doing this so much. Woo! See if we can entice another sow to come back up. I don't know how it came unhooked. I wasn't pushing it hard. Dang, that sucks. Is what it is. That's what keeps you coming back. That was so cool. They were hitting it like right there. Well, good morning, y'all. It's a Friday uh, morning here in East Tennessee. They are no people at this launch this morning, so that's a good thing. My cousin Brian and I are going to go catfishing here on Fort Loudon Lake, and we're going to be chasing spawning catfish. And so we're going to go way up shallow back in a creek with a bunch of rocks and timber back in the creek where they spawn at. And we're gonna anchor up and put our fresh baits out in front of them. Hope we can entice a fish in the, in the eating, one that's come off the spawn or one that's going on it or something like that. We're looking for a big dog this morning and uh, it's gonna be a good day today. In my haste to get out here, I forgot to put the depth finder on. So we're gonna have to carry it down to the boat because I was too excited and the coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Look at them geese. Guys got about four months until it's hunting season. Pretty morning here in East Tennessee. Gonna catch a big old catfish. You awake yet? Let's go. We got the white bass blowing up on bait right here at the launch. Probably some skippers too. Look at all of them. Look at all the white bass. Right now, y'all, we are checking out the back of this huge creek, and I'm trying to find some timber or something like that for the catfish to lay all their eggs and whatnot up in. They need cavities, uh, rock piles, stuff like that, and very shallow water to actually spawn because the water temp's got to be in the mid 70s. And when you're out deep, especially where there's flow, um, I've learned from a couple friends that. You know, the water temp down there is significantly colder, so you really have to go very shallow. So that's what we're going to try to do today. I always suck during this time of the year because I never fish shallow enough, I guess. So we're going to go back here in five feet of water or something like that and see if we can find a bunch of uh, stumps or something like that for uh, these catfish to lay their eggs up in, and then we're going to fish the area around it. There's a, uh, there's a pipe on the bottom right there, large. Six feet of water, perfect depth. I think that may be what we fish. Okay, we are back here now, anchored in like five feet of water. Let me try not to fall. 
way back in this creek. There's tons of rocks and stuff all over the place back here, trees. So we're gonna try to pick up these catfish who are sitting back here in these cavities spawning or the ones that have come off the spawn already laid the eggs of females that are now just roaming this area. And we'll see if we can pick up a toad. We may have to bump around a little bit. We'll probably give each spot 30, 40 minutes, see what happens. And uh, we're gonna get it out there. We're going light with our weights back in here just because it's so shallow and they may be a little, not skittish, but like picky. So we're going light on the weights just so it's a little bit more finessey. And we're just gonna spread it all around out in here. A big giant creek runs in from there, spreads all the way out. And the fish that come in here to spawn have gotta go through that right there. And then they disperse back out in through here. So that's the goal. Brian's a clipping weights on while well, I'm gonna start cutting bait. Just a little bit of time management here. What we got for bait. Fresh skipjack we caught while we were striper fishing and some white bass. We're going to start out with skip. And we're going to go from there. See, see if we can get on them, baby. Get us a head bait. Couple body chunks. Fresh is key. This was caught yesterday evening, right at dark, immediately put it on ice. So they fresh and bloody. And that is what the big old cats want. That'll be a double rig. We're just gonna get to chunking. Rocks come out right there, so I'm gonna toss out like right in front of them. And I mean, this snaggy is all good out in here, so see what happens. I'm gonna have the drag cranked pretty good just to get them out of stuff. Lob this big old head bait out there. Got that one a little deeper. Basically, I'm just going shallow to deepish. About 16 feet out there where the channel comes in. We're in five, goes up to two to three behind us. Chunk up a little white bass here just to give them some options. I don't know what they want. I mean, I'm not a fish. <laughs> you get a new knife. All right. Is it right the best head? Going down the hatch. I feel like a 60 pound flathead would eat this. 80 pound blue. That'd be cool. Very cool. Dude, what a fight that would be in this shallow water, dude. It'd be nuts. Yeah, you gotta just get them in. That's what. No, like you got to get them, especially if we hook one over that way, you got to get it over here. Yeah. Right there's getting bit. Look, let it go down. That's a fish swimming with it. You see it? Yeah, Yeah, he's still on it. I'm going to get this out. We may reel down on him. That looks awful flat heady. This one's going in like two feet of water. You put it down? I, yeah. Reel down, reel, reel. Is he still on it? That got slammed. That pulled some drag. Oh, he's still on it. Yeah. You just get it out of the holder. You got a good fish on, Brian. There we go. Peeled up. Is he stuck on the bottom? Or is, it, is he snagged? Might be snagged. He definitely swam it up in something, didn't he? Yeah. Dang it. 
That was a slam of jamma. Holy crap. Let me see it real quick. Yeah. Then we can get him to swim out. That's yeah. on that hole bait. I think he's still on it. Yeah. Bro, that got slammed. Yeah, it was down. That drag is tight, too. He definitely took us in something out there. Yeah, we'll have to take it up regardless. Might not still be on there. Dang. That's a good sign. Well, I got it out of the holder, guys. Or got it out of the rock he took it in, but that was a, a good fish. He just pulled off. Good sign. We are in five feet of water. Something's still on there. Yeah, that was on the hole bait. He just snapped, rocked us up and got off. How that, it goes. That's exactly what you put on there? So you didn't like take any of it? Nope. Oh, nice. There you go. No, no Paul. Yeah. We're back out there. That was pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even finish putting all the others on. Nope. Okay, we've got just a big spread covering everything right here. We're gonna give it 30, 45 minutes. If we don't get anything else, we're gonna move back up in there where we mark that big pipe. And we'll fish that, and then if we don't get anything there, we're gonna move back out to the main channel, see if we can pick them up out there. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. Stand up slowly. Put it down. Put it down. Wait, no. Let it fold down. He's still there. I don't know how big he is, though. That looks awful dinkish. Or turtleish. <laughs> we got a bluegill pecking on this thing in a foot of water. <laughs> That one's literally like no feet deep. He dinking on it. Come on, little buddy. Come on. He that is a small fish. See how it's like Yeah. yeah. <laughs> little feller. He just eating that bait to pieces. We had that one slam of jamma at the first spot that pulled off. Now we move back to that pipeline we marked earlier and it's back there, about a hundred feet. But there's trees out over here, so we're just gonna fan this whole area with all these rods. A little less tight quarters. But uh, that pipeline's right there and runs out that way. I think it connects whatever this kind of plan is to that thing over there. So it just runs across. We're gonna see if there's any kitties on it. Rods have been baited at this spot and this portion of the creek. We don't get anything big here. We're going to go to another place. It's going to be closer to the main channel, but it's still going to be shallow and it's got lots of timber in it. That'll be the next shot. And then after that, we're going to go deep. And that sort of stuff. Look at that. Wait for it. There he is. Yep. Real, 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 real. He may have put it down. That was wild. Dang. He was swimming all over the place with that. Huh. Yeah, he ate it and went that way and was like... Rrr, 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 rrr. Well. Dink. Come on. Go down. Let it go down. Real, 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 real. You got him. You may have them real, real, real quick, 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 quick. Did we get them? Or did he come off? Reel it up. Weird. They could be gar, too. Yeah. Or turtles hitting it. That was, that was, it was not a gar. It was a catfish because slime. I don't know that it was a very big catfish because that's how far this line yeah, went. Right. So that may tell us that the biggins ain't in this particular creek right now. But the babies won't be. Right there. That's on. Reel down on that. Oh, he put it down. What? How in 
How did that not hook up? What the heck? Here's why we lost it, y'all. Scale on the tip. I don't know how I did that, but I did. That right there is why we lost it. See it? Oh, yeah. He couldn't go past the barb. That looked like a good fish, too. Did he come off? Left it in there too long. Dang it. Pull it in. What the heck? I missed four. Yeah, I didn't even hear it. I like it just went down. Yeah. Dang. Uh, I'm gonna be mad at myself if there's scales on the tips of this. I don't think there is though. No scale on the tip. Just some grass, but that's not gonna do anything. That gum it. Pain. I mean, it's the middle of the spawn we're getting bites, so I feel good. Yeah. Like eventually, like one of these is gonna stay hooked up. Blonk. They keep eating it and like swimming around. All right, here's the main channel, about 60 something feet, and it comes up to this bay right here. And there's timber all down in here. So we're again, we're gonna go up shallow again, trying to find some flatheads or blues that are coming on the spawn, coming off the spawn, just try to intercept them. And after that, we're gonna come out on one of these main ledges and spot lock or drift up and down it, basically. And we just got trees all over the place in here. The further we go back up in here, the more trees and you'll see but they are quite literally all over the place. Kind of see them in the water there. Yeah, there we go. Trees, rocks, whole shebang. Timber baby. Like, we gonna snag some stuff up for show. Right in the danger zone. Right there. Whoa. Oh, where'd he go? Come get this fish. <laughs> he slammed it. All right, stand up top there. Yep, just keep it tight. Where's he at? Oh, did he just break off? Uh, did he just break us off? Yes, it was so tight. Oh my gosh. Broke us off in one of those trees. Just reel it up. There ain't nothing left on it. Cut us off. Dang. He slammed it too, dog. All right, wait, wait for it. It's already in. Look, all the line. Jeez. Yep, cut us off on something out there. Dang. Yeah. It's the Part right. of doing it. I don't think we need the pain. Clicker on. Pain. <laughs> Gosh. How you feeling after that one, Brian? I'm sad. Yeah. Big sad. Yeah. Rod down, peeling line. Fought him for a second. Hit something out there, cut us off. On the line for the longest than the other two, but yeah, that one was hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And that is just the game you play fishing this heavy cover. Something just picked that up. Mm -hmm. so... Is he still on that? What's going on yeah, here? It's, it's tension. So. Which one is it? I don't know which lot. Is it this guy right here? It's the left one, sorry. Yeah, he's swimming out to the channel with it. Came off. Little one. He didn't feel big. Yeah, he ate it and was going out to the channel. And he tangled us up on the other line. Here we go. It's now. 10 o'clock, 10.30, all the pleasure boaters are out. And uh, now that pulled our anchor, I think. We may be done here at this spot because if we start rotating all over the place, every single one of them is going to get stagged and we're going to lose $50 worth of stuff. So we're going to see what happens here for a second and then cut it. Well, we got our heart broken at this spot, broken off. So now it's middle of the day basically 11 o'clock 
We're gonna go move to the main channel now where the creek channels dump into the main channel. Then we're gonna spot lock right over the top of that and try to pick the fish up, moving out of the shallows, coming back out deep. All right, time to do the fancy anchoring. Oh, we about to have some fun with the yacht club. Yeah. And while we're out here with cinder blocks and cut up fish. Alrighty guys, we are spot locked at the mouth of this creek where it dumps in right here in the main channel. We're in like 44 feet of water. It comes out and dumps down into um, 55, 60. And we're just sitting in the mouth of it right now. We're trying to pick up the, the fish that move in and out uh, of that big creek system to the main channel. We've tried up shallow, now we're going a little bit deeper. Last five of the day will be the deepest one if we don't get anything here. We got our heart broken about 16 feet of water. We moved down quite a bit, uh, but we're just kind of experimenting and seeing where they're at. We're gonna drop a big mamma jamma down. It's a redemption bite, possibly. We upped our weights on our rigs to eight, just so they stay up underneath the boat a little bit better if we start drifting. I don't like drifting with lighter weight because then your lines start getting everywhere. Especially if they kick the current on a little bit. So that's what we're doing with this. Still gonna leave our drag pretty tight. This thing we're just gonna make a bonus pole and chuck it out in the main channel as far as we can. Watch, that's the one that's gonna catch the big ones. Yep. Middle of nowhere. Still going. We're on a line. I need to put a new line on this thing. There we go. Now we're on the bottom. We have a fish biting on that one right there on the bonus pole put it down dang come on all right guys after a little midday siesta and lunch at the famous and world-renowned what's it called country burrito it's attached, it's to, a gas attached to a gas station Lonis and i are back out here fishing for flatheads obviously Yes, Mountain Dew, Diet Mountain Dew. We've got some live bluegill that we caught, and then we got a live channel catfish down in there that we're gonna use as bait. And then we've got some leftover cut bait from this morning down there, and I get I cast into the gizzard chat too. So we got a myriad of different baits, and we're in Snag City, and uh, this is where my cousin Brian got broken off this morning. So and you caught three large mouth. Yeah, I caught three largemouth on one sabiki in front of the bass tournament, guys. <laughs> Channel cat time. Ow, shoot. We forgot the bait net. Maybe if we like... There we go. We cut his fins off. Real sharp. Yeah. Gosh, those things are deadly. Bait. Here, maybe if you just hook them up down there. Uh, I need Where to hook, you want him? hook it through his... Oh, that ain't good. Whoop. Hold on, guys. Alrighty, guys, we got Mr. Channel Cat hooked up for live bait, baby. It's time, Mr. Big Flathead, hopefully coming in hot. We're gonna send them out next to one of these trees. Probably gonna throw them over that way. If 
Big old bait for a big fish, even though a five pound flathead could eat this. I didn't throw them off, so that's the good thing. All right, we're gonna get all these baited up and if we catch a fish, we'll be back. All righty guys, we got half of them baited up with live bait. It's like live channel cat, cut bait, live bait, cut bait, live bait, cut bait, live bait, just all the way around the boat. We're back in this bay with all the trees and timber in it, and we're trying to catch a big old flathead before 11 o'clock, because I gotta work in the morning. And I've been out here all day, other than the siesta at Country Burrito. So, may the good Lord bless us with a big old fish, because dadgummit, I've earned it. Well, we caught a little blue cat. We thought it was gonna be bigger and close an hour bolt to sleep. <laughs> Okay. Chilling out though. Chill out, dog. What was that on? I don't even know. Honestly. I feel like I was asleep five minutes ago. Because you were. <laughs> <laughs> it was the days. Oh, come here. Come here. What do you mean? Some days you're the hammer. What? <laughs> Said some days you're the hammer, some days you're the nail. Yeah. Thought he hit it like he was something. Yeah, he did. He bent that rod over. Come here. Yo, fat sucker. Yo, fat sucker. I think that was on a live bluegill. Yeah. It was one of the smaller hooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep on doing that. Yeah, he ain't a live bluegill. Skin hooked. Yep. Well, send your daddy. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is he still on there? Yeah, pull him up out of there. You got him? Yeah, I think so. Well, we have another fish on. Oh, he's. He is, indeed, is a two-pounder. Yep. Indeed. Oh, big fish. It's is a it monster. A flathead? It's a flathead? Eee! <laughs> What'd he eat? What'd he eat? He ate the, the biggest bluegill we had out there. It's in his mouth. We need bigger bait. Yeah. Look at that damn, choked it. Choked him. Yoink. Well, we caught a flathead. That was a goal. It ain't much of a flathead, but it's a flathead. Still counts. What a dang day. I feel fine, I've had a nap. <laughs> I'm gonna probably have to use the Pliers. Bonk devices to remove this bluegill. Look at that monster there, Lonis. 40 pounder. Yes, sir. 40 ouncer. All day of the week. Flatheads are still cool. Yep. That little guy ate the largest live bait other than the channel cat we had. He choked it. Yep. Bonk. Troll him back. What a day. <laughs> 